In this video, I will show you how you can achieve fast-paced editing in DaVinci Resolve. Now, you will find that this type of editing is quite suitable for Instagram. There are many different reels that people edit and they have very fast-paced editing. So this type of style of editing is useful for editing your reels. And I'm going to show you how you can achieve that in this video. For this video, I have this sample video from this channel called uh, Frame Motions. This is an account on Instagram. And they have this amazing video, which is quite fast paced. So I decided to use this as a reference in order to show you how you can achieve fast paced editing in DaVinci Resolve. Now I'm only going to be breaking down this one single part from their reel in this video. And this is going to be the final output. But of course, I'm going to create more videos in the future in which I'm going to continue on breaking down this particular reel. But the main purpose of making these sorts of video is to show you how you can achieve fast paced editing. And the best way to do that is by breaking this down into pieces. It's quite easy once you break it down. So I'm going to break it down into different segments and I'm going to show you how to edit each segment separately. So with that being said, let's dive in. All right, so here we are in the timeline and here you can see I have broken this reel down into different segments and this is how it looks. So you'll find that I have broken down each segment into a separate part and this makes it very easy for us to break down the any edit that you have basically any edit that you want to know how to break down or how to achieve that sort of edit you just break down the trick to break down these videos is that you need to go into that segment where a different scene starts so only break or make a cut where you know that okay a new scene is starting from there for example right here you will notice that if we zoom in right here a new scene starts and then again if you go forward you will notice that okay this was the scene and then a new scene starts so this is how easy it is the only thing is the only trick is that since this is fast paced you don't really notice the subtle effect that okay this is just a new scene it's not a transition and that's why these sorts of edits are so interesting so right now over here i have some assets as well and i'm going to be using these for this video but of course you're free feel free to use any asset that you want so over here i have this timeline and i have already done some editing so let me just add another fusion composition and let me resize this so you can right click and click on change clip duration and just go ahead and change it to two seconds and three milliseconds all right so now let's right click and open in fusion page so over here i'm going to add in a 3d text and also a 3d merge node press Control space and search for render 3d connect this with the media out and in the text 3d i'm just going to add this text and go over to the font use future bold or you can use any font but the size it will be at 0.2 now let's go over to extrusion and just change the depth extrusion depth to 0.2 now let's go over to the shading and from here I'm going to unselect this use one material and go over to the bevel material and from here you can just select any other color this is the one that I'm using and this will help us add some depth into the text. So now let's go over to the transform and from here let's add a keyframe at Y, X, Y, Z for the rotation as well and just the Y for the translation. In the X let's change this to minus 10, Y let's change this to 30 and Z minus 5. And this will be at the zero frame so right there at the beginning now let's go over to four frames and i'm going to change the y in the translation to 0 0.2 now let's go over to 10 10 frames and i'm going to change the x to 13.5 the y to 1.3 and the z to 0. so this is how it looks now let's drag in another text connect this with the merge 3d and this is a 3d text obviously so just add a dollar sign and again the font is the same future bold and the size will be at 0.2 once again again go to the extrusion and change the depth to 0.2 now let's go over to shading and from here again i'm going to change the color the main color will be this color code and also i'm going to change the unselect just use one material and also change the bevel material to this color code right here we have this done let's go over to transform and from here let's change the x to 0.1 y to minus 0.2 z to 
and the rotation x2 minus 10, y2 24, and z2 minus 5. Now let's press control space, search for duplicate 3D, and from here I'm going to change the copies to 10. Go over to the z offset and change this to minus 0 0.34. Now in the rotation, change the x2 minus 2.5 y2 minus 2.7 and z2 minus 0.5 so don't worry just go over to the jitter now and right here in the jitter tra translation jitter change the x to 0.3 y to 0.8 and this is what you will get now in the shading i'm just going to go over to two frames create a keyframe at opacity then at three change this to zero come back at four and then move this back to one do the same thing from eight frames to ten frames the same thing just with that, like we did. So this is how it looks. So now let's go ahead and click on Merge 3D node, press Control space and search for Transform 3D. And right here at zero, create a keyframe at Z and go over at 24 frames and change this to minus one. So now we will have a movement like this. Go over to the spline and just select the Transform 3D the Z offset, select the keyframes and just press S on the keyboard. So this is how it will look. Now let's add in our image. And for this one, you also need to select this image plane 3D. And let's connect this with the Merge 3D. Now with the media in one, the image I'm going to add this color corrector as well and for this I'm going to change the saturation to 0 and also I'm going to change the gain to 0 0.7. All right. Now in the image plane 3D I'm going to go over to the transform and I'm going to change the size the scale to 0 0.6. And from here I'm also going to change the y to minus 0 0.1. Now let's drag in this shape 3D and connect this with the merge 3D. And let me just unselect the log width and height and go over to transform. First of all, let me just bring this up by using the Z and go back to the controls, change the width and the height so that it fits in with the eyes. We're just going to hide the eyes for now. And in the material, I'm also going to change the color to black. Of course, this is up to you, but this is just to show you how you can add these shapes and just hide the face of the person. So this is essentially what's going on right here. Just need to position this right there where the eyes are. And of course you can see the hand. So let me just decrease the width and the height a little bit. So right here, it looks perfect. Now let's add in this rectangle mask and connect this with the image. Change the width, increase it all the way to the end, height as well, and change the soft edge to minus 0 0.2. Now let's go over to 14, create a keyframe at center, and come over at 10, and change the Y to 1.8. And over here you can see the shape is visible, so we just need to hide this and let's go over at 12 because this is where it needs to come in go over to material and from here just create a keyframe at opacity and then at one frame back just change this to zero so this is how it will look all right so now let's go ahead and add in a text 3d connect this with the merge and right here i'm just going to add this text and just go with the Futura that I'm using. Of course, you can use any font, but this time I'm just going to make a slight variation at extra black and change the size again to 0.2. So all the texts are at 0.2. And in the transform, I'm going to change the Y to minus 0.2, the Z to 0.4. Now let's go back to the text. Right click over here and click on follow. Go over to this modifiers and go ahead and change the order to left to right. And now change the delay to 0 0.2. Now go over to the transform and from here you can see this size. Go over to 18 frames right here and 
Now you can just create keyframes at X and Y. Now come back at 12 frames and change both to zero. Go back to 18 and from here, let's click create a keyframe at offset and just double click on the follower once again and you will get back to it. Go back to the 12 frames and change the Y from here to minus 0 0.8. All right, so this is how it will look. All right, so select your render 3D and add in this transform node. And now we're back to, you can say, or now we're going to be using the 2D from here. Create a keyframe at center at 10, and then right here, one frame ahead, just change this to 0 0.55. One frame ahead, change this back to 0 0.5. Again, one frame ahead. Now this time, change this to 0 0.45. And finally, at 14 frames, just change this back to 0 0.5. So this will just give a slight, you can say, jump. And also go over to, right now, this is how it will look. As you can see right here, it will give a slight jump, but go over to settings and click on motion blur. Change this to quality to 10, and now see how this looks. So this will add a nice looking effect for this motion of transformation, where you can see the zoom that is happening. So let's add in a merge now, add in our texture, connect this with the merge and from here I'm just going to change the angle to 90 so it fits in with the screen and I'm also going to go over to the operator change this to in and let's change the blend to 0 0.7 so this is how it looks and of course we can play around with this so maybe 0 0.5 or let's say 0 0.6 so this looks good okay so let's go over at 22 22 22 so at 21, I'm going to create a keyframe at blend and also I'm going to create a keyframe at 23. The same keyframe is going, blend is going to be at 0 0.6 so that it remains the same. But right here at 20, let's change this to zero and also at 24, we're going to change this at zero. So this is how it will look. All right, so now let's select our, let's add a background and also let's add a ellipse connect this with the merge and let's go over to the ellipse and this is for the transformation that we're going to do or you can say the transition that we're going to create right click on the width and select expression and then connect this with the height now first of all let's change this to 0 at 20 create a keyframe and go over at 21 let's change this to 0 0.2 and right here at 32 let's change this all the way or you can say just change this all the way to 2, you can just drag this, this is how it will look. But now let's go over to 21 and I'm going to change the soft edge right here at 0 0.05 and also I'm going to increase the border width all the way to 0 0.2 and at 21 of course we could see it. So this is how it will look, this is how the transition will look. But just one more thing is go over to the background and right here at 22, let's go ahead and create a keyframe at this black color right here and then just one frame ahead. Let's change the color to white. So this is how it will look. All right, so here we have the first, you can say scene done. And now let's add in this multi-merge with this merge tool. And I'm going to add text, connect this with the multi-merge. And right here, we're going to add two different text, but the style is going to be the same. So right here at 26, we're going to add it. So you can just go ahead, type in any color, any text that you want. This is the color code that I'm using. And also the font is going to be the same as I did before, Futura at bold. This time size will be at 0 0.15. And in the layout, I'm going to change this to the center X to 0 0.25 and the Y to 0 0.7. In the shading, I'm going to change the opacity, create a opacity at 26, then go over at 28. And the one at 26, let's change this to zero. So this is how it will look. So now let's add in another text and I'm going to use the same settings as before. Just copy the text one settings, paste, right click, paste settings, and then just simply change the actual text itself. This is the one that I'm going to add. And let's also change the position. So this is how it will look. But the only difference is that we need to now change the opacity and move it above or you can say ahead of the text one so once you're done changing the position let's go over to the keyframes and from here let's select this 
and go all the way to the end where the text 2 is and from here you will notice that here are these keyframes right here so we need to select them so let's select them right here and just move them ahead so from 28 to 30 now they are moving in all right so the texts are done now we add this second image connect this with the multi merge and over here i'm just going to type in this uh, suits and of course we're going to use two of them but right now let me just change the size so 0 0.5 and let's position this a little bit right here so i'm going to add this once again and this one will be the background one so we're going to just use this as a highlight and let me just change the text or the name to suits background move this behind the suits and the same size as 0.5 and also go over to the suits the first one copy the settings from y and paste them right here in this background one all right so let me just position them and for this one this background one i'm going to add this glow this blur and i'm going to change the blur size to 50 and also we need to add a background so i'm going to add this background connect them just between the blur and from here I'm going to change the color to this color code so right now you will not notice it so let's go over to the suits background and from here let's increase the size and this is how it will look this is now appearing but we do need to make some changes so first of all let's go over to the blur and from here you need to click on this none at clipping mode go over to the background and from here go over to settings and from here just change from crop to inside now go back once again to suits background and increase the size so that now this is looking like it's at the outline of our image. So at 0 0.8 this looks good. Alright. Now let's add in this rectangle again. Connect this with the suits and increase the width and the height and change the angle to minus 20. And of course we need to increase the width again so let's go with 1.5 the height with 1.5 as well so that the whole thing is covered and soft edge to 0 0.05 so let's go over at 42 create a keyframe at center and go over to 36 and let's go ahead and move this down so this is how it will look as you can see now right here where it appears right here where it appears we're going to go over to the multi merge and the background we're just going to go and change the blend from 44 so let's create a keyframe at 44 and then at 42 let's change this to zero so this will appear after we have the suit revealed in so let's add in a text and this will be the final text connect this with the multi merge and let's type in our text and again the same color font I'm going to be using so this will be just the text at the bottom and this time I'm going to use a write on at this position 36 from 36 to 42 so this is how it will look so here we have everything done the final thing left to do is to add a transform node so right after the multi merge you will add this transform to so with this transform, we're just going to do a simple zoom in. So create a keyframe at size at 26 and go over at the end and change this to 1.1. So this is how it will look. Perfect. So this is how you can create these fast paced edits. And this is just a small scene as you can see. And look how much effort it required how much effort went into it. And there were so many different things that I did differently than the reference footage as well. But that just shows you that these edits require a lot of hard work. That's why I cannot do a whole reel with these, this sort of an edit in just one video. It will take some parts. So that's why I will be breaking down. I will be doing more of these. And let me know in the comments if you like this, if you want me to continue, because I do have plan of continuing this edit uh, breaking down the reel, the whole reel in different videos, of course. And of course, the purpose is again to show you how you can achieve this and the tricks that go into it, the techniques that go into achieving fast-paced edits in DaVinci Resolve. 
So I hope you like the video and I will see you in the next one.